This, my friends, is the Olympus Trip 35 film camera, and this is my short little guide how to check a couple of things to make sure that one you're going to be buying uh, will probably work okay. So the first thing to do whenever you're buying an old film camera, just have a visual inspection of the outside of the camera. Has it got any big dents, stings, scratches in the lens? I mean, these cameras are very old, so don't expect cosmetic perfection, but if it looks like it's been run over by a truck, <laughs> you know, don't pay very much for it. So, the thing about the Olympus Trip 35 is that it's a fully automatic camera that doesn't need any batteries. But there's no manual controls on it for shooting normally. So if you're out in, in the daytime shooting stuff, you have to rely on the automatic exposure. So we need to check that that works correctly. And basically what happens is the light comes into the front on the selenium cells and that helps the camera adjust the aperture to get a correct exposure. And the common things that happen is that that, that kind of light meter um, thing stops working properly or and the aperture blades get stuck as well. So even if the light meter is working, the aperture blades don't uh, move. And we'll also check the shutter. So first things first, what we need to do is just make sure that the on the, uh, on the lens ring on the front of the camera, that it's not on any of these f2.8, f5.6, it's on A, A for automatic. That's what you'll always be shooting with this camera during the day when you're out and about. You only ever use the F numbers when you're shooting with flash, that's it. And just as a matter of interest, these other things are to do the zone focusing. So if it's for infinity, you put it on that one, down to kind of a head and shoulder shot, and then you adjust the aperture with uh, that setting there. So obviously make sure those rings turn, but you wanna set it to A, then what you want to do is you want to put your hand over the front of the lens so you're blocking the selenium light meters and then you want to wind the camera on this one's already wound on and then you want to try and take a photo and what you should get is if you look up here in the viewfinder you should see i don't know whether you'll be able to see this or not there should be a little red tongue popping up you can probably just about see that popping up and what and i can't fire the shutter there you go you can see it there I cannot fire the shutter. That is the camera telling me there's not enough light. I'm not going to take a picture. And then when I take my hand away, um, there's still not enough light because we're inside. Let's point it at something bright. Like that light there. There we go. It takes the picture. So just to repeat that, you put your hand over the lens, wind it on, and then you should get... There, oh, you can see that better. You should get that red tongue popping up. And then when you point the camera at something bright... It should take the picture. Now, you might find a camera does that, but the next thing that can go wrong is these aperture blades inside the front of the lens are, are frozen because the camera hasn't been used for 20 years and they don't move anymore. So what you want to do is this is a time when we do want to change the aperture and we want to set it to 2.8 because that's when the aperture blades are going to open up all the way. Then all we do... Um, with the camera not wound on, well you could wind it, it doesn't really make any difference, but you just want to press the shutter button down and you just want to look at those aperture, aperture blades open. See how they open up all the, all the way and then close up all the way? There's the really small hole. And I so gently push it down, it's open up all the way to f2.8. And that way we know these aperture blades aren't stuck. I mean what you could do is you could then go to like f11 and then you can see the fact that it opens up a little bit. And then to F22, you can see it doesn't open up at all. And then back to F2.8, and you see that opening and closing beautifully. That's just what we want in the camera. So that's great. And then kind of the final check you can do is you can pop open the back and then wind the camera on. And then what you're looking to see, look if you look down into the, the set, we're just looking at the shutter fires. So you should see a little flash of light. There we go. Well, you've got to do this with the camera sets like f2.8 or f11 or something like that. Not on the A settings. It won't take a picture. So we know the shutter's fine. Okay. Now you still, even with these three things, even with checking the selenium meter and checking that the aperture blades haven't frozen and checking the shutter blades don't work, you might well still get light leaks because these light seals are around here will be long perished. Um, and there may be other mechanical problems, say with a winder not working on working properly. Um, but if you do those sort of three checks, chances are you'll be able to get some photos out of your Trip 35. Then the other kind of thing is just watch my beginner's guide to the Olympus Trip 35. I'll put links in the video description down below. 
Um, so to give you an idea of how to use the camera, it's very simple, takes great photos, has a fabulously sharp f2.0 Zuiko lens on, and they're great fun to use. So there we go, hope you enjoyed the video, and please subscribe.